So this is a carved representation of Amazons fighting Greeks. And Amazons are these legendary female warriors. They come from the northern reaches of the Greek world and they're very much non-Greek people. And they're, they're meant to spurn the company of men. They're supposed to cut off one of their breasts to better facilitate their archery. In the myths and legends from the ancient Greek world, there's these occasional clashes and fights between the Greeks and the Amazons. When a lot of this type of material was excavated and sold, that great period of digging and dealing, there was a real taste for white, luminous marble. And at this point, sometimes restorers would take, you know, hard bristled brushes, get acid and scrub the surface. And so remove those traces of paint. And now archaeologists are absolutely fascinated by this. And we do microscopic surface analyses to try and reconstruct the original colour of, of the objects. So what we have before us is, it looks like a statue representation made out of marble of the goddess Nike, so, or Nike. She's the personification of victory. This goddess is a really fascinating goddess in the ancient world, and I think she really introduces us actually to an underlying concept of this exhibition, that victory isn't something that you can necessarily earn through individual merit. It has to be given to you by the gods. And so you want goddesses like Nike on your side all of the time. You can see the fragments of wings on either side of her that have been quite beautifully carved. And that's the identifying feature of Nike. The folds of the drapery are actually accentuating her body. So you can see her breast, you can see her leg, and it's really outlining and emphasising the female form and body. Whereas often when you find representations of Greek women, women in the ancient world, they'll be a lot more modestly covered up. So I'm standing here with James, who's a specialist object handler, and he's come out from the British Museum in London. He is literally unpacking this object, which I've been looking at images of for about two years now, and this is the very first time that I've ever been able to see this. So this is a juror's ticket. It's made out of bronze and it has different markings on it which give us the name of the Jura. His name is Thucydides and it also tells us where he's from. So the owl on the olive leaf tells us that this is an official Athenian object and the gorgon head tells us the particular um, political region to which this Jura is belonging. Thucydides had been conscripted into uh, jury service for a year. And in ancient Athens, we know that 6,000 adult citizen males would be conscripted every year. Um, at a later stage from about the third century BC, they become used, um, they become manufactured from timber rather than bronze. But the excellent state of preservation to me suggests that it was probably found in a burial context. So Thucydides, who in this year was elected as a jura, he obviously found this a really precious and valuable object. It's made of bronze, and so that's really special to have survived in the ancient world, but it's also a symbol of his citizenship. It's a fabulous piece because it takes you into the Greek mind, particularly around the production, the creation of art. It's really about divine inspiration which for the Greeks literally meant the capacity that um, earthly uh, people um, would have to be almost in communion with uh, the gods and that the gods could take them into realms, poetic realms, that they wouldn't otherwise achieve on their own. We're, we're entirely fortunate that it exists. I mean, this was made um, around 220 BCE and to think, what's that, more than 2,000 years ago, this was crafted by uh, Archelaus of uh, Praini. And so it was made probably in a Alexandria and associated also with uh, Ionia, which is where you know, part of modern Turkey is. 
And so you get this sense of the Greek world being not just sited in one place, but many places around the Mediterranean basin. And that story too is, in a sense, embodied in this work. This is Achilles um, slaying the Amazon queen, Penthesilea. Uh, it's a very famous uh, vase, in fact. The fineness of the depiction of the scene that it displays on this side, there is another side, is fabulous really, isn't it? Just the execution of the line. This is actually a, a very important narrative which sadly um, is contained in a work that is now lost um, to us, but we, we still recognise and understand it. They seem to be engaged in this um, battle, but at some level also active recognition. What we have here is a terracotta figurine of two women crouching down and they're on a low wall and they're playing knuckle bones. And the fact that they're mould made suggests that there probably were lots of copies of this sort of thing made. And what you see here are these two women crouching down and in their hands are knuckle bones. And James is actually pulling out some actual knuckle bones from the ancient world as well in a variety of material. Knuckle bones have an, a series of sides and depending on which side it falls on, uh, there's certain point scoring and so you get a different point for the different area that it falls on. And the different numbers can give you a prediction about your future. And so people would actually play knuckle bones to predict things, whether it's the likely success of business venture, whether they should be going travelling. And young women had there was a game they would play called Aphrodite Throw. I mean, I say game, it's not really a game at all, it's deadly serious, where they would be using knuckle bones to predict their chance of getting married. Mm. And not just married, but a happy marriage, of having children. And all of these concerns are of the gravest, the most utmost importance to a woman in the ancient world. A woman wasn't necessarily an individual in her own right. She's always the daughter of someone or she's the wife of someone. Mm. And so it's really important that in her married life that her husband is a kind man. And so it's possible that these women here, crouching down, are playing Aphrodite's throw. It's really extraordinary for me to be able to see these objects for the first time. And I think, oh, because, you know, you spend years looking at these objects and you know the dimensions, you know the material, you know what they look like, you've been looking at high resolution photographs, but something happens when you see them in the flesh and they always surprise you and they always look a little bit different. Yeah, when you see them on display, they just still startle you. <laughs> 